I mean, all that venom. Was there really any need for all that venom? Let her act like that on the stand. Everyone will see it for what it is. What's up with those little yoghurts? And you didn't have to go blabbing about this witness, David, rubbing her face in it. Like a red rag to a bull. Yeah, well, of course, everything would be my fault, wouldn't it? Where are they? Maybe we want to hurl those things. They're for kids. In second thought, you'd think she'd be relieved, wouldn't you? I mean, she'd much prefer to think that he died in an accident than think he was murdered. She hadn't been lied to repeatedly. I'm sure she would. Yeah, thank you. Is your girlfriend eating them? I don't know. Is yours? Tina will show herself up, so will Tracy, and then we'll know the truth. If it even goes to trial. If it even goes to trial. Yeah, well, I've got to go and open up the shops. David, <coughs> would you hurry up and get dressed, please? We've got the Renshaw twins at nine. Bye, sweetheart. I'll see you later, Grant. Come on, get your head out of that fridge. You've got the Renshaw twins at nine. What's it like, life in the fast lane, eh? My mother. Yeah, well, the, the witness that came forward. Oh. So who do I ring? Mrs. Payne. Oh, bye, Mrs. Payne. Oh, thank heavens for a cake break. Lovely. What was with all that animosity this morning? Don't she get on with Renshaw twins? Oh, no. <laughs> David booked them all in at the same time by accident. Look, it's a long-standing feud. Apparently, they went on a caravan holiday together some years ago. Uh, actually, I did it on purpose. I were hoping it would kick off. Oh, <laughs> David! Oh. Um, who were you talking to before? Uh, I phoned the police, if you must know. Why? See how things stood. And? Oh. Well, they told me to phone witness care, but I couldn't get through. The trial's still going ahead, by the sounds of it, anyway. To be honest, you know, I felt I was being given the brush off. You do think this witness is genuine, though, don't you? Well, why shouldn't you be? Well, you get these nutters sometimes, walking into police stations, owning up to all sorts. They like the attention, don't they? Yeah, but if they were happy enough to notify Gail's solicitor, though... Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's an eyewitness. Cast iron alibi. Is it, though? Yeah. It, it's not a matter of owning up to something, is it? Cos it's an independent third-party cleaner who says she saw me mum getting off that boat. Audrey, you don't look convinced. You been avoiding me? Been on a factory roof all day. Oh. I thought you were avoiding me. No. Do you think I overreacted? Well, last night. What do you think I'm talking about? Well, I don't know what to make of it, Tina. So you have been avoiding me? Well, I probably feel different. It was in your shoes. I didn't get any sleep last night. And when I finally managed an hour or so this morning, I had this dream. We were all there in the courtroom and they called for this new witness. Guess who walked in? Buzz like you. Are you trying to be funny? Uh, well, no, you said it was a dream and bad things happen in dreams. Yeah, it was my dad. And then... Um, and I was so happy to see him. And he was so happy to see me. And we tried to get to each other, but everyone was stopping us. And he was calling out my name, and I was calling out his name. And then I woke up. I was crying. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said buzz like you. Grant's phoned the police about the witness. What? Playing the old no comment thing, but now she's trying to get hold of Mum's solicitor. Oh, I knew that this would happen. I told you, didn't I? Don't pass the blame on to me. Whose idea was it? Yeah, who put the money up? The girl wouldn't say anything about herself, would she? Oh, well, I don't know. Let me have a think about that, seeing as I know her so well. Oh, shut up, David. Shut up. She's given her evidence, yeah, so they must be taking it seriously. The police want to speak to her again, though. I mean, this is a murder charge. We paid someone to lie, David. But it's not lying, is it? Mum wasn't on that boat. The girl wasn't either. How can it be a lie if it's true? Anyway, whether the girl was there or not, it doesn't matter. We only did it because we were forced into doing it. Look, I'm going to go back to work. So should you. Don't look panic, don't think about it, don't talk about it. Oh, well, that's easy for you to say, innit? You ain't got to work with Gran or your girlfriend, who, by the way, is egging her on. Look, just say a prayer for Mum, because that's what we need now. Divine intervention. Have you got 
an appointment? Uh, we just wanted a quick word with Audrey. Aye. We're, we're not going to stop long. Peter's offered me some shifts at the bookies. Really? Yeah, I started today. It's quite fun, actually. I mean, you'll be used to the conversation, but uh, for the town hall, it was a really small office that I worked in. There was just me and Ruth and Ruth's secretary, Jill, and occasionally Mrs. Corns. Yeah, perhaps we could cut to the chase, then. Right. Um, we were just wondering if you would like to call round at hours later on. Yeah, for a cup of tea and a chat. You know, about um, what's happening. Well, I don't think that's a good idea, really, do you? Well, we just thought you might be civil enough to want to talk it through. Talk what through? Hmm? The fact that your Trace is a scheming liar who's made all this up for God knows what reason. Whatever she hopes to get out of this, Deirdre, I hope it's worth it because there's a family being destroyed over here. Well, join the club. Come on, let's leave it at that. Have you heard about the witness? What? So where exactly do you think she could have been? I don't know. Um, along the headland or up the road, maybe. Man, she could have been floating by in a hot air balloon for all I care. Well, don't you think it's just a little bit unusual coming out of the blue like that, the eleventh hour? Well, thank you for your vote of confidence. Gail, it's got nothing to do with confidence. Why would she suddenly remember that she was there, huh? Well, they're always asking for witnesses, aren't they? Maybe she didn't hear about it until now. Ma'am, it's a lucky break. I, I mean, you sound, you're talking like you want it not to be true. Oh, Gail, yeah, for goodness sake, of course I want it to be true. I just don't think we should rely on it. What is it? Well, I tried to speak to the police about it, but they more or less fobbed me off. Today? Yeah, this morning. Go and tell my solicitor. No, I've left him a message. Ma'am, there'll be plenty to support my case. I mean, there's handwriting experts to say I didn't sign those forms. There'll be the forensic. Yes, there'll be Tracy Barlow saying that you confessed to it. And there'll be a Polish woman with no axe to grind saying I wasn't on the boat. I mean, who are they going to believe? That's it. I'll see you in the morning. I'm scared. I know you are, sweetheart. There's no need to be. Hmm? Listen to me, Gail, this. Come on. You are an innocent woman. So you just tell the truth and everything will be all right. <laughs> will it? Yeah, I promise. <laughs> right now, <Nancy>, sweetheart. <tight. laughs> I don't even know what she said to them. Well, they've told Mum's solicitor, so they couldn't have dismissed it completely. How do you think it played out when she went to the station? Look, well, maybe worrying about it too much. I'll be the copy, you be the cleaner. What? You've just walked into the station. Go on, go on. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, good afternoon, madam. What can I do for you? <sighs> I'd like to report some evidence. What? You'd like to report some evidence? What's that mean? That man who died on the lake a while back, I've got some information relating to his death. To that night, I mean. Well, I'd say it's a terrible start, David. I saw the woman, uh, I mean, I saw a woman coming off the boat just before he sailed away. And why are you coming to us now? Well, because I've only just heard about it. You know, about him dying and her being accused of it. When did you hear about it? Well, today. How? I read it. Where? In the paper. Which paper? The one I grilled her like this. No, but the prosecution might. Which paper, madam? Uh, I don't know, the one in the pub. Which pub? I, I can't remember, I don't go in it that often. Did anyone offer you any money? What? Nobody asked you to do this? No. Seemed very anxious, madam. I'm not anxious at all. Let me remind you, Mrs. Polish cleaner woman, that you're under oath, potentially placing yourself under a great deal of danger. Do you recognise this man? I'm holding up a photo of you. Do you recognise this boy, I should say? As if to do that. 
It's a very expensive coat you're wearing. What? Where'd you get it? I, I don't know. This, this is stupid. Where'd you get your coat, Mrs. Polish? I don't know. Woman? Top shop. You don't know where you purchased your own coat? This is ridiculous. If, for any reason, David, the police do decide to visit that pub, then we're screwed. Mum screwed and we're all going to hell in a handcart. Am I right or am I right? Am I right or am I right? All right, I admit it. Yeah, what we did was insane. No further questions. <sighs> Seems ages ago we did this place up. It was a laugh, wasn't it? Well, it lasted. You and me? I know it must feel like we did this together and then here I am, on my own, hogging it. But I've needed it. Do you really think Gail's guilty? What? Jason, she confessed to it. You don't know Tracy Barlow. If the police didn't think Gail did it, they wouldn't have her locked up. I've got my dad's memory to think about. He was alive, he met her, and then he died. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean she killed him. So... Your mum's offered to come with me in the morning. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want me to come with you as well? No, no, I'll be all right. Well, I'll have a way with Bill. I mean, we've sorted most of the flashing out anyway. Right. see ya. Jason. What? Stay with me. Go home, relax. Take Lewis out for dinner. No, Lewis is working. Anyway, I'm not in the mood for dinner or relaxing. Grant, I know you might have your doubts about this witness, but with you any reason to go blabbing to Mum? Huh? Rubbing her face in it? Where were that going to get us, eh? Well, they'd be putting pressure on her, you know, David. Making sure she can be trusted, making sure she's credible, so the prosecution don't make mincemeat out of her. Why don't you come out and say it, Grant? Do you really want me to? Yeah. I really want you to. Yeah, OK, I will. Have you got anything to do with this witness, huh? <sighs> uh, David wouldn't do anything stupid, Gran. I think we're all getting a bit uptight. This time next week, we'll be sitting down to dinner with Mum and this whole nightmare will be over. Hello. Oh, hi, yeah, thanks for getting back to me, Gail Solicitor. Oh, well, yeah, that's good news, I suppose, huh? Yeah, see you in the morning. Well, uh, this Anka Grabowski will be giving evidence. See? What did I tell you? The only people they'll be making mincemeat out of are Tina and Tracy Barlow. Was the solicitor happy? David, I think I owe you an apology. It's always the worst bit, this. Waiting for it to start. I'll enjoy it when I get there, will I? I'm only trying to help. I know. I'm sorry. Will your family be there? Me mum. The eldest. Oh, it's amazing how much that helps. Still can't believe this is happening. Hey, come on. A few more days and you'll be home. Or facing a life behind bars. Oh, look. You didn't do it. Anyone can tell. Pity you're not on the jury. <laughs> hey, I'd, uh, I'd give you my lucky teddy bear, but I didn't do me much good. <laughs> it's the thought that counts. Anyway, good luck, love. Thanks. Yeah. You be brave, eh? How would it go wrong? I don't know. I've just got a bad feeling about it. This has all come out of nowhere. Look. There is another reason why I'm doing this. They've told me that if I tell them what I know, they'll help me see Amy more. Which is another good reason not to lie. I'm not lying. What are you doing this for Amy? She's my daughter. I'd do anything for her. What's Gail Platt at the side of her? 
just as long as an innocent woman doesn't go to prison over this. It's what she told me, OK? If it's not the truth, then she's either covering for somebody or she's bonkers. And you're not making it up? I swear. I'll try and get off the bank and check she's OK. I just hope she knows what she's doing. See if you can run them two over on your driver. <sighs> that would be murder. Justifiable homicide. It would if it were Tracy Barlow, yeah. Come on, anyway. Text me if what happens. I will. Good luck. Cheers. May the force be with you. What are you looking at? Come on. Let's find something to occupy you at the salon. Your mum's in good hands. She'll be fine. Now, the next few days aren't going to be easy. It's important that you stay calm and controlled at all <sighs> times. Yes, I know, but it's vital. The jury will be scrutinising your every response. They'll want to size you up, like people do with anyone they've never met before. As the trial goes on, they'll form an impression, decide whether or not they can trust you. Anything that makes you look in any way shifty or unstable. So if they like me, I'm OK. Never mind the evidence. Well, the evidence is the most crucial thing, obviously, but there's not much you can do about that now. What you can do is win the jury's trust. Now, the trial will open with the prosecution outlining their case, and as I said last week, they're going to be saying some, well, pretty unpleasant things about you, but I know that you will treat it as conjecture and lies. Because they're just whistling in the dark, aren't they? Hmm? You just hold on in there, OK? Place. Brings it all back. Well, at least it's not you in the dark this time. No getting away from some people, is there? Hmm? Tight fit, aren't they, these public galleries? Stop going on about them, Gran. They'll be gone after today. Excuse me, please. Oh. I'm here, like you, to support Gail. Are we ready to begin, gentlemen? Another one. It's like the front stores at the guillotine in here. That fateful night, Mrs. McIntyre believed that her husband's financial worries were finally behind him. Imagine her surprise, therefore, when he revealed that he was not only still in debt, but in fear of his life due to the attentions of an unsavoury loan shark. The Crown alleged that when he told her of his plan to simulate his death and start a new life abroad on the proceeds of his life insurance, she was even more dismayed. She was angry that after her standing by him through thick and thin, he had cobbled together this hare-brained and illegal strategy in which she refused to go along. From the evidence you will hear, you may safely conclude that there was a violent argument took place during which they sailed out onto the lake. Having failed to dissuade her husband from his plan and seeing her future happiness evaporating, the prosecution submit to you that her anger got the better of her and she struck him on the head with a rolling pin. Tim drowned, be believing that his plan to fake his own death would enable her to cover her tracks. The prosecution case is that she got the boat back to shore, cleaned the murder weapon, and hid it. She then returned home, where she deliberately lied 
telling friends that her husband had stayed in the lakes because he had found work there. The crime might never have been discovered had his body not come to the surface. But that is where it all went wrong. I call Miss Tracy Barlow. Tracy Barlow? Bible with your right hand and read from the card, please. <clears throat> I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. She wouldn't know the please truth. Please give your full name. The face. Tracy Lynette Barlow. Now, Miss Barlow, could you begin by telling us how you know the accused? I was glad to have an old neighbour sharing a cell with her. I think she was, yeah. And the two of you got on well? We did, yeah. So much so that she started to share confidences with you? That's right. Did she say anything about events in the Lake District on the 8th of February? She did, yeah. Perhaps you could tell the court. She said that when they were out on the boat, she was so mad because he said he was going to leave that she just saw red and she smashed his head in. No. She said there was no way she was going to let him get away with it, so she did that and she pushed him in. That's not true! Order in the court. Are you quite sure about this, Miss Barlow? 100%. She pushed him in and she watched him drown. She admitted it. So, Miss Barlow... The row between Gail and Joe McIntyre had started in the cottage, you say? That's where it all kicked off, yeah. She then follows Joe out of the house and onto the jetty. She was hoping to be able to talk him out of it, but I think she already knew it wasn't going to work. Uh, my lord... Yes, I... Mr Hughes. Miss Barlow, please stick to the facts. Miss Barlow, are you surmising? Did Mrs McIntyre tell you she knew she was wasting her time? Well... No, not exactly. She didn't have to. The rolling pin did. The rolling pin? I don't understand. The rolling pin was in the kitchen drawer. A row starts and all hell breaks loose. Gail grabs the rolling pin and shoves it under her coat. She then chases Joe down to the jetty and onto the boat. You don't do that if you're planning on talking somebody round. Rubbish! Every word lies! Mrs McIntyre. There wasn't time to search for anything. It all happened so Quiet. quickly. Mrs. McIntyre, you will get your chance to speak. In the meantime, you must allow the court to listen in silence to the evidence presented to it. If you refuse to do that, I'll have you removed to the cells. A good deal of respect for the law, Miss Barlow. I don't like injustice, if that's what you mean. But that's not what you mean, is it? This process tends to work best if I ask the questions and the witness answers them. But you're going to say, how can somebody who's in prison pretend to care about what's right and wrong? I'm not pretending. Well, I should hope not. You swore on the Bible you weren't. And I meant every word. Well, let me uh, return to my point, if, if I may. You say you respect the law even though you yourself were convicted. Wrongly. Of murder. I was a battered woman. I acted in self-defence. If you say so. But the jury didn't believe you. Oh, they believe me. But the laws on provocation... The are... last time you stood up in a court, this, this very court, in fact, and swore on the Holy Bible, every single member of the jury refused to believe you were telling the truth. My point is, why should this jury believe you now? Prison has changed me. Twenty-odd hours a day banged up. Gives you time to think. Yes, it must get tedious. It's worse than tedious. It's brutal. The women you meet, their attitudes, they're not the sort of women I'm used to spending time with. Look at her. Little Miss Prim, like butter wouldn't melt. Was anybody buying this? So, any distraction from the routine, any 
extra attention must be, well, very welcome. The unexpected call to the interview room, the, the plate of biscuits, the friendly smile. Small privileges that take on greater significance when the rest of the day is so crushingly dull. A plastic cup of coffee off a copper with bad breath. Well, a trip to court, the chance to get all dressed up and see your family. I haven't come here for a jolly. And anybody who thinks I have is wrong. If you say so. Convicts hate a grass. They hate grasses more than pedos. Why would I put myself out there? Well, that's for the jury to decide. Put another innocent woman through what I've been through thank for you. a day out and a plate of custard I said cream. That's enough, Miss Barlow. <laughs> Given your history, Miss Barlow, I'd suggest that's exactly what you've done. No further questions, my love. No, I have no questions, my love. Thank you, Miss Barlow. She's so, uh, she's got to be telling the truth, hasn't she? It's bad as you think of. Yeah, well, there's loads of nerves there. There's only me sticking up for my dad. What if I bottle it? Right, as soon what as there's a break, you ring me. Because I want to know every cough and splutter that comes out of Tracy's mouth. What? Wait! Oh, this is all we need. Out of order, intimidating a witness. Yeah, come on, that is how it'll seem. Right, does she look intimidated? Tina, please think about what you're going to say. Don't stick the knife in just because she can. Put your foot Man, you've said your piece with dignity. Less is more, mate. Less is more. pathologist for over 15 years. Could Joe McIntyre's head injuries equally have been caused by an accidental blow from the boom, swinging out when it was least expected? Given the state the body was in when it was recovered, yes, I I'd say that was equally possible. So it is equally possible then that Joe McIntyre was accidentally knocked into the freezing water where he was drowned alone and in the dark. He was still alive when he went into the water, so yes. Well, might he therefore have, well, been too weak from his injuries to be able to drag himself out? It's a possibility, but impossible to say definitely. Thank you. Thank you, my lord. Uh, no further questions? I have no questions, my lord. Thank you, Mrs. Hathersage. No worries. Here to support Tina, Audrey. No more, no less. I can't hear myself think. Why she doing it? It is a public gallery. Ghouls. Well, that's the pot calling the kettle. <laughs> I call Tina McIntyre. Tina McIntyre? How would you describe the defendant's attitude towards your father? Hard to say. It didn't feel natural to me. In what way? No matter what he loaded on her. Debts, failing business, tablets. She'd always come bouncing back with a big Stepford wife smile on her face. Stepford wife? Yeah. All normal and loving on the surface. But inside, there was just this mess of crazy wiring. She didn't act like a real person. Because she was so loyal? It was more than loyal. It was, well, desperate. Like she couldn't bear the thought of saying no to him. Was she afraid of him? No. No way. She wanted to be with him all the time. Know everything about him. To what extent? Well, obsessive, really. Like she's decided he was the one big love of her life and she was never going to let him go. She wants a pound of flesh, I told you. Tell us about the days immediately after your father's disappearance. Miss McIntyre. You've all heard the evidence, what happened on the boat. Just ask yourselves this. What kind of person sends texts from someone who's missing, probably dead? You'd have to have a guilty conscience. Miss McIntyre. Or you'd have to be sick in the head. Either way, you sure as hell wouldn't be innocent. Loved your father? To bits. When your mother divorced him and tried to cut off contact? I never did. You were the apple of his eye? 
When he smashed up the medical centre on the street where you live? I was mortified. I wanted to kill him. But at the end of the day, he was sick. He was in addiction. When he fell foul of the loan shark, and the loan shark turned his attention to you instead? Not instead. As well. He never let up on my dad. They don't. Ah. Targeted you both, then. Although you didn't owe a penny, you stood by him. He was a stitch-up. I'm going to side with some gangster. I suggest that the step of figure is you, Miss McIntyre. Despite your father's obvious failings, you placed him on a pedestal, didn't you? No, I... Nothing could knock him off. You're making it sound... You're twisting it! He concocted a plan that was typically reckless. He carried it through without a thought for its effect on you. Weren't you angry with him? Wouldn't you be? He should be here now! But instead of admitting disappointment, you steer the blame onto Gail. The one woman who had as much faith in your father as you did. It's not the same. The person at the top of Joe McIntyre's list of priorities was Joe McIntyre. And you, the apple of his eye, well, I'm afraid you came a distant third. Didn't you? Sounds like he managed to land a few punches, though, you Mr Hughes. Sure. Yeah. You know, and if anyone can sock it to him, it's our Gail. I mean, everything about her screams innocence, and I haven't even been in court. No, you haven't. I only hope she can hold it together. And if she can't, it's all down to the star witness. Anchor. She better be good under pressure. You are the best singer in the class. When's the concert? Yeah. Oh, I wish I could see it, darling. It's all right. Becky's coming. But you know, soon, soon I'm going to be able to see you more. Where I'm going, kids are allowed to stay longer and there's a big playroom and loads of toys. Amy, will you sing your song for me? Amy? Hello? She was going to sing her song. Oh, um... She's tired. Tracy, hang on. Sing your song for your mum. Go on. All right, then. Say a night and tell her that you love her. I know she loves me. I feel guilty. If I'd pushed him more, if I'd been a better wife, if, if I'd listened more, instead of thinking everything was all right. You've said it, Gail. You've said it 20,000 times. I know, but I... If you say it again... I am going to scream. <sighs> the truth is, right, your fella was desperate or crackers or both. And he got there all by himself, with no help from you. In fact, he would have got there long ago hadn't it been for you arriving on the scene. You didn't kill him. You loved him and you tried to save him. Any other mud that they sling in court, they can kiss that. And don't you forget it. I won't. Right. Now shut up and go to sleep. Carla. I know that. What's going on? The pole's having a wobble. I know. Of course you're bound to be nervous, but you've been in and out in like half an hour. Oh, lass. Yeah. Takes the money, then has a pang of conscience. Look, just get on that train, Anchor, please. I beg you. Well? Well, I think I managed to talk around. Good. I'll leave her to you for a bit, and then I'll ring her back, and I'll have to threaten her with violence if she doesn't show up. He perverts the course of justice with such ease. I better get to work. I'll call you as soon as I get a chance. See ya. Lovely She'll be here, don't worry. So your shoulders if she doesn't. Oh, well, no pressure, man. Well, don't worry. I'll be rooting for you. Hey. I've every confidence in you. 
Hey, look. You might be a plonk, yeah? But you've been absolutely brilliant through all of this. Mum should be proud. Hey? Eh? Come on. That seat's taken. Over here, Norris. Best seats in the house. Ah. I've been queuing since nine o'clock. You queued? I once kept outside a well-known departmental store for three days. Really? I got a hostess trolley for ten pounds. The call will rise. We will now hear from counsel for the defence. Mr Hughes. My lord, members of the jury. Joe McIntyre met his death in the icy waters of Lake Windermere. But can you be sure you know how? There were no eyewitnesses. No murder weapon has been exhibited or identified by a scientist as delivering the fatal blow. The prosecution here has offered you only theories, theories rather than reliable evidence in seeking to prove that my client was responsible for her husband's death. Yes, it's true. When Mr McIntyre sailed away, she panicked. But after you have heard her evidence, you may believe that that was the behaviour of a loyal and devoted wife. Hugely compromised by the ridiculous plan her husband had sprung upon her. Now, we submit that it is not, as alleged, the actions of a guilty murderer. I've got an twist for testimony, we intend to call a witness who saw her get off the boat before Mr McIntyre sailed away, proving that she could not possibly have been responsible for his death. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give She'll be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please give the court your full name. Gail McIntyre. Mrs McIntyre. I want you to tell us exactly what happened in the final few minutes you and your husband were together on Lake Windermere in February. He told me about his plan. What plan was that? The one to fake his death. I thought he was joking. So, what was your reaction? I begged him not to go through with it. Did you argue? Well, of course we did. I was furious. Wouldn't you be? And how did this argument progress? We fought a bit. A bit? It felt like my whole world was falling apart. I thought Joe had lost his mind. What happened then? I tried to stop him getting on the boat. We wrestled a bit, but he was a very strong man. Did you hit him with anything? No. No. I didn't want to hurt Joe. I loved him. So, what happened next? He shoved me off the boat. And then? He sailed away. Can you remember the last thing he said to you? He said... I love you, Gail. And... I stood on the jetty and watched as he disappeared. And that was the last time you saw him. You were on dry land, he was in the boat, alive and well. Yes, absolutely. It's ingrained on my memory and it will be till the day I die. I've got... Hi. 
I was just about to put my arms around you then. But uh, I remembered I'm not supposed to know who you are. Now, Tracy Barlow. She claims you confessed to murdering your husband. She made it up. She has a very vivid imagination. Why do you say that? She lied to her friends, her neighbours, her family. She claimed she was the victim of domestic violence to cover up a murder. I wouldn't believe a word she says. No further questions. Mrs. McIntyre, if your version of events is true, then why, when your husband sailed off into the distance, didn't you call the police? I was worried I'd be getting Joe into trouble. So rather than take the obvious course of action, from the very outset you were making calculations, weighing up the pros and cons. I thought Joe was alive and well. So you rang your son David and summoned him to the lake, yes? Yes. Recovered your husband's boat and towed it back to Manchester. I had to. And when the police asked you about your husband, what did you tell them? That he was working in the Lake District. So, you lied to the police? I had to. To protect Joe. You lied to his daughter? I had to. From the moment you left him to die in the water, your every action was designed to deceive and dissemble, to cover your tracks. <gasps> no! I was appalled, obviously. Surely that's the understatement of the century. You must have been hopping mad. Maybe. You had bailed this man out emotionally and financially time after time, and yet here he was trying to draw you into his murky web. But I didn't hurt him. I got off the boat. We've already heard from an eyewitness who saw you arguing on the boat. They didn't see you get off. I've told you what happened. We've also heard from expert witnesses who say it is extremely likely that he sustained the blow to the head before he went into the water. Did you strike him on the head with the rolling pin as Miss Barlow alleged? No! Do you know how he obtained his injury? I've asked myself that question a thousand times. But you admit you caused the scratches on his face and arm. Mrs. McIntyre. Yes. No further questions. I'll take you for a decent cappuccino after, and then I'll hand over to Lloyd's. It's a great name for currency, that, isn't it? It's Lloyd's. Look, just stick to the story. Yeah, and, and, and any tricky questions, just, just act dumb. You know, I speak Polish. Where, where are you going? I'm sorry. I can't do this. <laughs>